Welcome to the RSP Boiler Room. I'm Matt Waldman with the Rookie Scouting Portfolio. We're taking another look at Benny Snell, the running back out of Kentucky, but this time we're going to talk about just a little bit about the process of evaluation because when you're getting through the process or you're entering the process of evaluating a player, there's a lot of unanswered questions. And if you're doing it right, you're you're really trying to work through players with an open mind about situations. So when you first encounter a situation like this one, you may have more questions than answers. And I'm going to explain why that is. First of all, it's the play design. You're going to see that you really have, in essence, three pulling blockers. You have a pulling guard, you have a pulling wing back, and you have a pulling wide receiver. And they're all working to the left side here. Then you have this number 52, the defensive tackle, who's working through his man, the center, and getting into the backfield here. Ends up wrapping Benny Snell behind the line of scrimmage, and Snell's able to work to the line of scrimmage for no gain. It's a good play by the defender. But could Snell have avoided this? Because when you look at the play design here, he really has three options to work behind, but he starts working downhill towards the rear pulling the blocker here. And when he does that, he puts himself in harm's way with the penetration. And when I watch this play at first, what I see is a penetrating defender right here as he's taking that exchange. That's something that Snell with his head up should also see. So he's one step away right here to be able to make all the difference. Instead of taking that longer step the way he just did right there, maybe he could have taken a shorter step or maybe with this left, this instep that he has, maybe to be able to plant his foot a little bit further to the left so that he could t- get those hips turned outside. And instead of working behind the inside shoulder or behind the back of this wing back, he could actually have been outside the, the wing back to the left of him by the time he got to this point of the field, that he could have been maybe a half step to the left. And that would have forced the defender to go through this wing back instead of coming behind him. And if he did come behind the wing back, then you still have Snell about a half step away here and been able to get outside and maybe work behind number six. And you can see that the block here on the defensive end by the pulling guard is pretty good. He would have had a chance to maybe get behind that and maybe cut downhill of that with the defender here or because of the fact that there's a defender unblocked In this area, he would have continued to stretch it outside, follow his receiver, and maybe get more yards up the hash. These are hard questions to answer, and I'll tell you why, you know, give you a couple examples why. As one is, you know, when I look at this play, I think he should have diagnosed it. I think that this, he took a smaller step here, but really couldn't get his foot out here. Now, is that because he doesn't have mobile hips? That's something that I would take a look at, want to take a look at with more study of whether or not he can really turn those hips outward so that he can bounce plays outside a little bit better because you can see he's trying to get outside here the way that he has the instep of his foot planted. But could he get his leg turned outside a little bit more so his hips could really activate and allow him to bounce this a little at a more dramatic angle? Or is the play design set up this way in a way where that he's supposed to follow this blocker to this level. And even if it is, shouldn't he be able to recognize when that play is not going to work well and be able to work to the outside on this fashion? So, I mean, these are the types of things that I look for when I look at several games with a player is, you know, what part of the physical aspects of the running back position does he have to work on? What does he have to own in this play that he could do better in terms of, you know, recognition of how the defense is stopping this within the scope of the play design? How much of this is some sort of physical limitation and how much of it is just a good play by the defender? You know, right now, if I had to make a guess right now, knowing what I know about watching other running backs who've done well diagnosing plays early at this stage, his footwork could be a little better here, just just being able to you know move those hips a little bit more. So I'm going to have questions about his hip mobility that I'll have answered in a little bit more detail as I get through his portfolio of games. 
But it's also a good play by the defensive end or defensive tech. You know, and in terms of quickness, really not much to say about quickness here because unless he's able to get his hips outside and then make it a race to the edge, we can't really judge his quickness on this play. So a lot of interesting little things that go on when you're studying a player early on in the process. Thanks again for watching. For more RSP Boiler Room videos, you can check out my YouTube channel, Matt Waldman's RSP Film Room, and my site, www.mattwaldmanrsp.com.